Hi, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap. Now I've got a question for you. Have you been having a little trouble measuring up? No, I don't mean to the expectations of others. I just mean to the eighth inch, to the quarter inch, to the half inch. Today I'm going to introduce you to some tools and techniques that will make your life a little bit easier and a lot more precise. <laughs> Now today's project is this adorable little dimensional envelope that has a folio that you pull out from the envelope and on the folio we have all these wonderful little pictures and of course you can see the windows that have been cut into the folio and this is the type of project that might strike fear into the person who doesn't particularly like rulers and craft knives but I'm going to show you some great tips to help you make this project lickety split. I'm using this Textiles and Notions mini accordion folio with the envelope that's from Club Scrap and it's got some wonderful texture this 20 inch piece of paper here that is really handy because it's already scored for you and ready to go. So we're going to begin by cutting our first window into this envelope cover and to do that we need to find the center so I'm going to be using this 2 by 8 grid ruler from Club Scrap and I love it because it's measured from 0 to 8 on this edge and then a 0 center on the other edge so if you need to find the center of something let me show you how easy that is I'm folding the little envelope on the two score lines so that I'm sort of isolating my front panel here's my 0 center and then all I need to do is match the measurements on both sides so that I know that my ruler is perfectly positioned in the center of the cover. Then I want my first window to be an inch and a quarter down from the top edge. So how does this ruler help me do that? I'm going to lay the ruler at the top edge of my folio. Now if I scoot it down a couple of squares, that's a quarter of an inch. Then down a little further, now it's at a half inch. A little further, three quarters. At the center of the ruler I'm at the inch and then I'm at an inch and a quarter. That's the measurement I was looking for. Now traditionally, you'd have to take your ruler, measure an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, connect the lines to make sure they're straight and still you, they might not be, and all I have to do is just lay my ruler down and once you become comfortable with doing it this way, cutting and measuring is a whole different ball game. Next I'm going to be using this Tonic Studios utility knife and I like it for this project because the blades stay safely inside the knife when I'm not using it and just with a flick of my thumb I've got a blade that I can use. Also when your blades get dull and they will because you're going to be doing a lot of cutting you simply remove the top of the knife and it has a slot right in the bottom there and you slide the blade into the slot with safety glasses on of course snap the blade off and then you have a fresh new blade to use. My blade happens to be fresh. So I'm going to replace this and we'll make our first cut with our knife. Inch and a quarter down and centered. Now my cut is going to be about a half inch wide so I'll start at the quarter of an inch to the left of the zero and go to the other side and now I have my first cut. A very simple easy cut and then I'm going to slide it on up by about a half of an inch and check for perfect horizontal alignment and I will make another cut of the same length. Then I'll turn it back to its side and use my ruler to make the connector cuts. Again, I'm checking my horizontal alignment with the ruler right over here. I'll find those ends and connect them. There's my third line. And my final cut will be made to create my perfect window. Now all I have to do is pop it out and I've got the first window dead center on my envelope. Now we need to make the envelope complete by gluing it in, into place. It comes with pre-scored flaps, so here's my first flap right here. I'll put glue on the edge of that flap, liquid glue will work best, and then fold it into place to get my dimension. Now this bottom flap, you might be tempted to put the flap inside the envelope. Avoid doing that. Put your glue on this tab and keep it on the outside of the envelope. If we fail to do that, when we try to slide that folio down into the envelope, it's going to get caught on the top edge of this tab and you'll be really frustrated. So let's just skip that. Here I've gone ahead and glued my envelope together and there's my little tab on the outside. Next we get to work with our folio. The pre-scored lines make it easy to just fold it into an accordion. Now the paper has a textured side and a smooth side. And I have folded it so the texture side is on the front with the free edge opening on your left. It, just in case you want to do it exactly the way I did it. Then let's take our folio and slide it into the envelope. 
I'm going to cut a window right into the first panel of my folio. And to do that, I'm just going to use a pencil or a pen to trace the window onto the first panel, and I'll slide it out. And now I'm finished using the envelope for a while, so I'll set that aside. I'll open this up, and let me show you how cool this is going to work to make our cut. I want to make this next window, this one right here, an eighth of an inch larger than the previous one. The cubes on this ruler represent an eighth of an inch. So my first dotted line is going to set right on top of my pencil line, and I will extend my cut with my craft knife another cube on either side. And there's my window. Now, what I will do next is take this window, take my writing device again, trace the window onto the next panel of a folio, and cut it out in the exact same way that you just did with your ruler and your craft knife. Now, if you're not really comfortable in using a craft knife, let me recommend that you not give up. Just practice. Start with lightweight paper and work your way to heavier card stocks. Make sure you press firmly down in your ruler and firmly with your craft knife using a very sharp blade. Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and done that. I have a series of growing windows in my folio. Started out really small, each one getting a little bit larger. And I want you to notice that I expanded the window more on the bottom edge so that the window would grow without actually coming off the top edge of the folio. Now let's start to add our photos. Each panel of the folio is two and a half by three and a half. So I need to trim my photos for these panels to slightly smaller than that, which will be two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Now I've got a four by six photo here, and most of the time I use my regular trimmer to cut my photos, but sometimes I have to make too small of a cut and it's kind of hard to see these smaller measurements. So I actually use my acrylic rulers to cut my photos. So at this point I'm gonna attach my photo. I'm using Trio Adhesive by Judikins and put my photo in place. Next, I need to attach this side to the photo. And to do that, I, I've got a little challenge. I have a really wide area here, a somewhat wide area, and an extremely narrow area. And that's where the benefit of this trio adhesive really comes to light. The three millimeter strip perfectly puts the adhesive on this area. The six millimeter strips on the outer edges and one of the great things about this adhesive, it may appear so, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon to replace the adhesive in the tape runner. It actually is pretty user friendly. All right, now I'm just burnishing and peeling away. And now when I turn this over, you'll see my photo perfectly attached on all four sides. And I think it's a really nice professional look. Now, the next frame, I just want to attach a photograph that already has a window in it. So I simply laid my photo in place with temporary adhesive, turned it over, traced my window onto the back of the photo, and cut it out with the knife and the ruler in the same way you saw me do this earlier. Now, I need to attach this, so I'll use my adhesive. Okay, then I have a trio of adhesives, three, six, and 12, and I can place my photo right over the window. Okay, now I thought it would be fun to try some window treatments. So for this next one, I'm going to start actually by attaching some of the six millimeter adhesive along the outer edges of the window. Next, I've preloaded some 32 gauge gold wire. Now this is really narrow stuff. I've put some little seed beads on there and I'm just going to be pressing them onto the adhesive that's e on either side of the window and I love this look. It's just really interactive. And just one last one here. If you like to incorporate bees into your project, this is a great way to do it. And I can layer my next photo into place. There are other ideas for window treatments. Here I have a printed transparency. I've cut it to fit. I can layer it onto the page and then attach yet another photo with the window inside. Now let me show you how all of this comes together on our final folio panel. Check this out. My front page, a beautiful bird of paradise. And let me just remind you, this technique works the best when you're using landscape and nature photos. Sunsets work great too. And what I like about it is, when you look at it this way, it's sort of like a telescoping window. I just love just the enjoyment of this book when it's done in this way. And then of course that will live happily inside your protective envelope folio. Well, let me show you some other great projects where you can measure up. Now here's the same folio, just a little bit larger version with the windows. I've done a similar treatment here cutting the windows, and I just love more of the picture is preserved in this size format. And once again, you have that really cool telescoping effect when you look at the windows from the backside. 
How does this transfer to your scrapbook pages? Check this page out. Here we have the same little wire suspension technique up at the top, long, narrow window. It's rectangular shaped at the top of the page with some punches. And when I take the page and I turn it around, I have another whole page right here and I've got double duty on my window embellishing. I think that really turned out neat. Over here we have one of those eight by eight altered board books. It started out white, window cut in the front, and every time I open a page in the book, the window gets larger and larger to reveal the full-size photo at the back. And speaking of windows, check this page out. It's actually filled with a window screen. You can see right through it. And all the things on the front side mirror each other on the back. Well, I hope that once you try these tools and techniques, you'll have absolutely no trouble measuring up. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the Design Guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.